You're watching Adjuster TV. So Kelly Proctor. Kelly Proctor, hello. Our boy Kelly Proctor says, uh, his question is, a good topic for, and I guess it's, maybe yeah, ask this question. So a good topic for newbies and some seasoned ones would be working with PAs, working with roofers, et cetera. And if you get a liability claim thrown at you, then probably how to work with lawyers on the opposing side. Um, he also says doing recorded statements. I, I think we'll tackle this, the, the common things that happen. If you get a liability claim thrown at you, then hope, then, then you've got some e and insurance, hopefully. Um, so you, if you're a W2 adjuster, which nothing wrong with that. I did that for a very long time. Um, you'll have, you know, if you're a 1099, you probably have, you know, the IA firm may be charging you $5 per claim for, you know, to be on mm -hmm. their, you know, I'm going to say, get your own, you know, um, Kaplik is the way to go for sure. 100% because those, as far as I know, they're the only, only company that does E and O for just for us, right. just for anybody that's associated or related to the insurance industry. Um, so, and then they also sell general liability insurance, which covers you for negligence and for the, all that kind of stuff. So that's how you work with lawyers. And when you, if you, and this is the difference between e, e, uh, Kaplik and like Hiscox, which is the other company I think that does, like right. they just do small business, like general liability and, and, you know, you get a letter from an attorney as an adjuster, as an IA, and you've got Kaplik and they say, Hey, you know, we're saying that you're, you screwed up and we want to, you know, you're in trouble. You call Kaplik and you send them that letter and then they will, they help you through the whole thing. They'll like, they'll be like represent you and they'll, they, they'll if, make sure it stays out of court. And if it's got to go to court, then they'll help you with that part as well. It's not like you get dragged into court and then get, have to pay a whole bunch of money. And then you file a claim with Kaplik and say, Hey, I just got sued for right. ne negligence and I lost. Can you help me? You start, you step one, the sec, second you get a letter, you call them and, call and them, they'll right. take, they help you do the whole thing. Right. So that's, to answer your question about that, Kelly, that's what you do with lawyers with if you get a liability claim thrown at you, right? Working with um, PAs and roofers and attorneys and things like that, the thing is, is that you, um, you, you do your job the way you normally do it, right? If I'm going to try to... Um, I didn't used to do this and I think a lot of adjusters don't do it or they, you know, as the longer you do this job, the more you want to have everybody there at the same time, I think. Um, so w when I'm doing a claim, I want the homeowner there and I want their contractor there. If they have a PA, I want them there. The first inspection, right? I don't want to go do reinspections. I don't want to do, I just don't want to, I, I want to take care of it the first day. If, if I can leave that house with everybody nodding their head, yes, we're good to go. Numbers are good. We're, we're happy. Everything that we, we think that we need to do to have to get this claim closed is here. You know, the stuff that you definitely couldn't pay for, you know, we all addressed it together, looking at each other and nodding our heads and going, well, oh, I can't do it. And well, you know, what about this over here? Blah, blah. So you negotiate a little bit of where you have an agreed scope and pricing. When you leave the insurance house, it is the absolute best thing in the entire world. The carrier wants that. The IA firm wants that. You want that. The insured wants, wants that. that. The contractor, everybody wants that. PAs want that. I mean, everybody wants it, right? So with PAs, it's a little bit different than with, with a contractor because the PA is going to take a percentage of the insurance proceeds, right? 10, 20, you know, 20 or whatever percentage. It's, it's, a, it's a chunk of it, right? So that's why a lot of times people are scared of working with PAs because, I'm going to write a $20,000 estimate and the PA is going to come back with an $85,000 estimate because it's full of fluff, right? PA with, with the assumption that the, that the PA and the adjuster are going to negotiate down to something in between 20,000 and 85,000. The PA takes his 20% out of that. And hopefully the homeowner has enough left over to do the work. It's kind of the way that that whole thing goes. You can't fluff up to meet a PA's estimate. Right. You can only write it to what it actually, what a contractor would do, would do it for. If the, if the homeowner feels like they need to have a PA there, and in a lot of cases, maybe they, sh they do need to have a PA there to help them, um, then that's going to come out of their pocket and they're going to have to figure that part out.
is really what it boils down to. So you, you have some wiggle room. You can negotiate with things. If you can get everybody to agree, especially at that first meeting, then you're, it's a home run for everybody. So with working with contractors, a lot of those guys are using Xactimate. They're using Xactimate pricing. So if you, right. as long as you agree on the measurements, yep. I mean, what is there to argue about? The pricing exactly. is going to be the same. Unless they're they're adding on a premium for, we use you know solid gold nails and we hand nail it you know with uh, special Japanese hammers or yeah, we hand nail we don't use we don't use right we use staple nail guns or staples or whatever whatever it's com it's the customary and reasonable whatever it is if if, if all you hear in the background while you're having that conversation is because the guys got air guns and compressors mm -hmm. all over the place and their the roofs are going on. It takes a day to put a tear off right. and put a new one on. And this guy wants to charge extra for hand nailing. I'm sorry, but you know, the guy that's doing the, that roof right there can come over here and do this roof without hand nailing it without, and get the, get them the same. Right. And the know, same quality. Same, same quality. Everything. Yeah. Same everything. Obviously, you know, there's some, there's installer error that can happen with any of this stuff, right? They can, the, the nails can be overdriven or if the setting's wrong or, right. you know, but that's fortunately I've not had to deal with PAs. No, it's rare. I don't, you know, I, I probably uh, can count on two hands all uh, the PAs I've worked with. I've was on the other side of the business selling, you know, restoration and have them on our side, you know, but mm -hmm. I've never been on the other side. Having, but because of being on the other side, I've seen some of their tricks and things that they like to employ. Yeah, and do and and, and and basically it's this and and whether it's property or whether it's auto and it's a body shop. Okay, some body shops they play this game where your insurance company is evil and we're going to advocate for you and we're going to get everything right. for you yeah. and we're we're ICAR certified and this means that we're we're at a higher standard and blah 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 and and, and what they do is they just send in supplement over supplement over supplement till they wear somebody down that they're going to agree with them and just give it to them so they'll shut up and go away. Right. You know, and, and believe me, they know that game and they know that some of these adjusters and desk adjusters are just overworked with a big load and they're going to just finally just agree to it just to get it off their desk because they've got to get it shut. And, and you get caught in the middle of it as the, as the field person. It's just the game. And it's not personal. I mean, I've I've seen people get really upset because they had to deal with PAs. I've gotten upset myself because I had to deal with shops that that you know just want to fluff the heck out of these these estimates, like trying to charge me two hours to set up a welder, you know, things like that. And they want to charge you, you know, this different rate for that. Right. And it's just a bunch of fluff. Well, at the end of the day, they know that if they they're squeaky enough that they might get another 10, 15% yeah. on that claim, 20% on that the claim. Term. And if they get that, you know, 50% of the time, you know, they've added some pretty good profits onto them. And each one of those estimators is making money off a of profit anyway. So they're going to do what they can. And, it, and it's just, part, and that's just how you look at it. It's just part of the game and you don't take yep. it personal and just be professional, you know, um, do your job right. If you make a mistake, you know, um, fix your mistakes you know, yeah, and and just move on with it, man. That's all you can do. Don't take it. Don't take anything personally yeah. ever. Yeah. And I don't care how much guys yelling at you and calling you all kinds of names. It'll, it'll happen. It'll come out of left field, and the next thing you know, the guy's like, you can. He's spitting on you. Yeah. He's yelling so much. I had a homeowner tell me, "I want your license number. I want your supervisor's name. I want all this stuff." You know, um, I'm taking all this to my lawyer right now. You okay. know, and, Fine. And, and my response to that was, well, sir, if you're getting your lawyer, that conversation's over. <laughs> right. I'll see you. We're done. Yep. There's nothing yep. else I can do. That's right. You know, I just wait to hear from him. And uh, it's a fast, and they go, well, well, maybe I don't really need to go to my lawyer if we can do this, you know, but yeah, it's just, remember, nothing's personal. Nothing's personal. And, and, uh, even if, even if, and I've had this happen before where I go out to a house and maybe I go at like seven o'clock in the morning, I go early and there's dew on the roof. The sun is like just coming up. And so the, the back slope, which was the slope that was facing the storm is in the shade. Mm -hmm. And this other side is like just barely got a little bit of sun. I can't really tell long story short. I can't, I'm looking at it and I'm like, I can't, 
I don't think there's any hail damage on this roof. I mean, there's a couple of dents and I'm trying to get good pictures and it's just not good lighting. It's just, I'm just not, it's shouldn't have done it. Right. right. And then that one pops open for a reinspection two weeks later and the contractor's out there and you roll up and you're like, it makes you a little bit mad because you're like, I was already out here and I already said there wasn't any damage. Gosh, darn it. Right. And then there's all these like, you know, bodybuilder guys standing in the front yard and they're lifted pickup trucks with all their, you know, roof yeah. graphics all over them and 15 ladders. And there's three of them there, two guys up on the roof and there's, you see chalk circles already. And you know, there's another guy, two guys standing in the front yard talking to the homeowner and the homeowner's doing this, you know, and like looking around there. I have no idea what's, you know, and you get up on that roof and it's totaled. I mean, it's, there's hail damage all over it. Yeah. Um, Holy smokes. Look at this. I'm circling. I do my test. I do the whole thing, measuring everything. And I'm, sir, I, you know, I missed it the first time. I apologize. Here's your check. Bye. I mean, yep. it's, I'm not going to like cry about it. I'm not going to make any excuses. I'm not going to feel bad about it. I'm just going to get it off my plate, get that guy taken care of and move on down the road. You have to leave your ego and your pride at home. <laughs> so big time. one more tip on contractors. When you talk to a homeowner and you ask them if they've, they have a contractor already and they say yes. And you say, can you make sure that they're there at the time of the inspection? Yeah. And they'll say, sure. If you get there and they say that your contractor couldn't make it, there's probably no damage on that roof. Right, right, right. You know, yeah. they, they, they don't think they can get it. It's a numbers game for those guys. They're going to come in. Their bosses are telling them, you know, if it's, if it's a straight sales guy, he's got to get so many contracts signed a week. He's got to get so many inspections, you know, what we call you know, um, adjuster meetings done a week yep. or inspections done. And, and it's a numbers game for them. And they say, hey, if you're getting this many signed contracts, you get this many inspections a week, you're going to end up selling this many roofs and that shows activity and activity breeds activity. So just make sure you're out there doing something. Yep. Well, at the same time as that guy gets a little bit more experience under his belt, hey, he satisfied his little quota for getting a signed contract. He's hoping that, you know, hey, there might be some damage on the roof. And he's hoping he gets that one very – loose riding adjuster that's going to come out there and replace it. Or he knows that he doesn't have a snowball's chance in hell of getting this thing replaced. He's not going to waste his time. He's going to go work on something else that does, you know, that, that he knows for sure he's going to get paid on. And, and that's, oh, yeah. that's my, that's my experience from the sales side of it. That's my experience from it, from the adjuster side of it. You know, that's just the, that's, if there's no adjuster there at the time of inspection, chances are there's no damage Yep, yeah, or not enough to justify replacement. Oh,